our roll call, we have um, 14 present. Alderman Jim Bourne is excused. Alderman Kevin Matichek is unexcused. Um, would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome on this snowy, snowy night to the Committee of the Whole Meeting. Um, I would ask for a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Do we have anyone listed for the public forum? No. All right, very good. Um, we're going to go on then to item 2.1, a review and discussion on the conceptual redevelopment plan for the former Boston store property. Mr. Palaszczuk is ready with his PowerPoint we'll and his plugs. We'll see if technology works. <laughs> just a second here <laughs> so what I wanted to talk about tonight is the conceptual plan for the Boston store property and we've worked on this for the last few months in-house um, as you know we're moving forward with demolition in the coming weeks and we wanted to lay out a conceptual plan uh, for that development phase moving forward um, so what I wanted to do today is go through a uh, PowerPoint presentation over the thoughts behind it. You've maybe read some about this in the news. Um, there's a little bit more information here. And then uh, take any questions that you may have at the end. So as we all know, the site was identified in the Harbor Center Master Plan that was adopted in uh, April of this year as a prime uh, site for implementing the three key strategies that came out of that plan. Um, and this drawing you can kind of see its uh, coordination to the art center the mead library the wild center uh, above and beyond children's museum and the fountain park in the in the plan this is somewhat of a review but in the plan it laid out three key strategies the first strategy was leverage sheboygan's arts culture and food heritage the second one was to encourage market uh, supported housing and urban development, and the third is to enhance connections and cross um, marketing within the Harbor Center District. So, starting with the leveraging of the uh, Sheboygan Arts, cart, Culture, and Food Heritage, um, this site is a priv pivotal point, uh, essential to the formation of that of that district and that concept. Uh, the space will allow for cultural events in the heart of the downtown. Um, you may have seen in the news, the, such as the weekly concert series, where we partnered up with the Art Center to go after a grant to bring a uh, concert series to this uh, property in the summer, uh, provided demolition gets done in, in a timely time fashion. Um, this would move forward on the property, and then it would, could be used for other venues. Uh, the site would be a uh, provide a physical link between our downtown assets, as you saw on the previous slide. Um, the mic, some of those of you may not be aware, but that spaceship looking thing on the corner of the Art Center property is actually called a musically integrated kiosk environment, and it's a recording studio that opens up to become a stage. So the intent is in discussions with the Art Center is to move that stage over to um, green space on the Boston Store property. Uh, work through an agreement with them to be able to allow it to be used for more community events and really encourage the use of um, that area as kind of an arts venue, um, music, and those types of things that would happen. Um, you can see in the picture on the bottom of this, this is what that stage looks like when it's opened. The art center has a, a stage that goes out in the front that allows for larger venues to happen on it, and when it's closed up, it can be used as a recording studio. We've heard a lot of questions about what will happen with Fountain Park under this plan. Uh, Fountain Park will continue to function as it is uh, today. It will continue to have the events and concerts and um, festivals that occur there. 
um, such as the Sheboygan Pops Band. They'll continue to play there, the municipal, Keel Municipal Band. Some of the larger venues that um, wouldn't be able to necessarily occupy this space and use this stage would still continue there. Earth Fest, Lobster Boil, all of those types of things. But under this plan, the Arts, Culture, and Food District group, if you will, the committee that's been meeting for a number of months and it's really been initiated out of the Business Improvement District is to look at other con other festivals within uh, the city and see if there's some smaller venues that could relocate to Fountain Park to try to bring, you know, a weekly around-the-clock ambience to this downtown and bring more <laughs> venues for entertainment because as we're trying to build um, more housing downtown, people are going to want more things to do. Under number two, uh, key strategy number two, encouraging market-supported development. The thought on this property, it's not um, what has been in the newspaper, that this property is going to be a mix of green space and, um, how, and uh, new development to bring tax base that was lost as part of the Boston store back. Um, there's the idea of some type of mixed concept uh, development. And under the plan, it leaves the opportunity for two mixed-use buildings to be built. Um, one of them is roughly 30, one footprint would be 32,000 square feet, the other footprint would be 19,000 square feet, and it would allow it to go three to five stories um, above. So there's an, based on the height of the buildings downtown, um, it would be kind of creating this town center plaza, if you will, with development around the outside and green space in the inside. Under number three, leveraging the uh, connections and the cross-marketing, you can see from this map that uh, opening up New York Avenue, which is planned to happen uh, next year, and reconstructing a parking lot, for those of you that have been involved with the Transit Commission uh, discussions have heard this, um, we're in the final stages of getting that ready to be uh, bid out, and that would connect New York Avenue between 8th and Center, uh, 7th Street. And then also to create this connection piece, if you will, between the middle of the department store um, and really kind of encouraging this pedestrian link between the library and the art center. So this is the proposed plan. Um, I want to just say that under the proposed plan, this is what we're going to use for marketing to interested developers. Uh, really what it is is the green area in the middle is, would be used for this public space. And you can see the two footprints for the um, buildings uh, on the north and the south side with the square footage listed there. Uh, MIKE is that Mike stage that would hopefully be relocated to this property. And then on A Street, we'll be opening back up as part of the New York Avenue reconstruction is to expand uh, A Street back out to the right of way where it had bumped in for the Boston store property and bring in some additional um, angled parking along the street and then some type of mid-block pedestrian crossing there to connect to the front of the library at that fountain. And then the uh, area to the south you can see would be the New York Avenue extension, and the public parking lot on the south side of that is owned by the Redevelopment Authority. That's part of the redesign project. Um, that is to move it to reserved parking because um, there's enough of a need downtown for monthly reserved parking um, and that lot has to be reconstructed as part of this whole plan, especially with the Boston store, because that was all one piece of property from the south side of Boston, one parking lot from the south side of Boston store down to uh, Center Avenue. So this is where this is what we're using as a um, marketing plan now. We've developed, and I, I'll hand this out at the end, we've developed a two-page plan of what I basically just spoke to you about, and uh, we've gotten this out to at least a handful, if not more, of interested parties to date. A couple of them are working on some site plans, and I would think going forward here after the new year, we should be seeing some conceptual plans from prospective developers um, on those uh, development pieces that are outlined here. But what we thought we wanted to do is we wanted to lay out a concept beforehand, get the buy-in basically from the council and from the city staff that this is the direction we want to go because the first question that a developer normally says to us when they come to us is what is the city's vision for this property and if we didn't have something laid out we felt that we would be behind. So um, we've, Don's worked with us, we've worked with the bid, we've worked with the downtown people to lay out this kind of conceptual drawing. I will say that with a caveat this is conceptual in its state, the final development plan um, with the development will ultimately uh, 
show us what this is going to look like. But the intent of this green space and this kind of corridor, um, the, in, the idea is, is that the uh, parking utility would maintain this property. Um, we would work through a number of venues and build really a, a, a calendar as green space for this to have, the goal would be to have, you know, fairly often throughout the night, throughout the week during the summer, have venues on there. Um, for those of you that go to the Midsummer Festival of the Arts at the John Michael Kohler Arts Center, they typically have closed down 6th Street and New York Avenue for that venue. It looks like this year they're going to try to shift it over um, and start using this kind of like plaza for that venue. So I think this is, you know, just some of the uh, stuff that's in the works. We're also working on a public art grant. Um, that we'll be submitting uh, with a number of partners in the downtown to try to go after some uh, couple-year funding streams to be able to kind of implement some of these ideas that have been brought forward in the plan on the public art side of things. So this is, in a nutshell, where we're at. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I just wrote a, a letter to the editor if you hadn't seen it. Um, I would encourage you to do so, the talking about where we've been and, and why the interest has been on taking, getting this property in local uh, control and trying to move this plan forward. Any questions for Chad Alderman Mellinger? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chad, on A Street, the drawing shows that the still bumped out the sidewalk. Is that going to be that, that, that or is it going to be put back to the original? No, that there will be a bump out there. There'll be a mid-center, mid-block crosswalk. And the and purpose of that is what? Is to encourage people to flow from this property into the uh, that fountain in that concrete plaza in the front of the Mead Public Library. Okay. <clears throat> they won't be as large as what's shown on this drawing. Um, Dave uh, Beebel has a. They have a standard that they use for uh, bump outs, and that in it. It's kind of in, it's kind of blown up on this, but it'll be whatever comes, whatever's required under their standard. But their in, the intent is to have a mid-block crosswalk there. And my second question would be, if if a developer came and wanted to use up more of the green space than what you've got shown there, I mean, is there a minimum amount of green space that you want to retain, or are you flexible with some developer that would co come and want? I think we're flexible. That's why I said that I, this is really a concept plan at this stage, and whatever they ultimately need to make their development happen, we would work with them on that. But we, we at any stage, want to have some type of green space in the middle. Other questions? Uh, just to note, we, um, the meeting is being recorded, so if you'd use your microphone when you're speaking, that would be helpful. Anything else for Chad? Very good. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> We'll move on to item 3.1, a report of the committee from salary and grievances uh, regarding uh, recommending amending section 2-341 of the municipal code that James Amodio is hereby appointed chief administrative officer for the city of Sheboygan until August 23, 2016, which may require a memo of understanding that will include all the necessary time frames. Um, we had both the report of the committee and the ordinance come before us, so I believe that we can um, bring a motion to file this matter, was my understanding. Motion to file. Second. Alderman Van Akron. Madam Chairperson, I think the ordinance was the only thing on the last, in the council meeting, it was the ordinance specifically, so I think we're going to have to pass this along with. All right. Um, the only difference between the ordinance that we passed in the council meeting and this document which came out of salary and grievances was a desire to build in some timelines um, in the event that Mr. Amodio would decide to leave prior to 2016. As it stands now, we have an ordinance that just sets out the term of the contract. So we are looking at a separate document that would be just a, a memo, a memorandum of understanding. Um, the committee had looked at some months' notice uh, or some weeks' notice uh, if Mr. Amodio was going to leave just to uh, facilitate uh, our looking for a, an additional chief administrative officer. Does that make sense? Yes. And also just for clarification, that document would come back to salaries and grievances for review um, prior to being Correct. accepted. So it would be just something that, that we would work on as a separate agreement. 
All right. With that in mind, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. I guess then I'll make a motion to that the RC be accepted and adopted and that the memo of understanding being drawn up and be brought back. Oh, that's right. We still have a motion. Yeah. You'd have to rescind it. So you had a motion to file, correct? I Brian? have a motion. All right. Are you agreeable to um, uh, revising or um, rescinding your motion? Yes. And the second? Very good. So now we have another motion on the floor to, and a second to adopt the, um, to adopt the uh, report of committee. Is there any discussion? All right, hearing none. We lost part of our equipment. Thanks, Jed. Jed, what'd you do? <laughs> so Committee of the Whole is going technological, so we're going to be hopefully doing electronic voting tonight. So the motion is what now? The motion is to adopt uh, item 3.1. I'm sorry, Alderman Ballinger. Madam Chair, when I clicked on to join, or when I opened up this document on board docs, it never asked me to join the meeting. Try it again. Go back, in. Go back oh, and do go it back again. again. Okay. Yeah. I was slightly ahead of my time. Me either. So what do we say they have to make? We're logging to board docs. Or do you want to do an email also? Um, just do a voice vote. Sure. All right, we're going to do a voice vote on this matter. Bef on the motion before us. All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Chair votes aye. I'm sorry. Nay. Nay. Chair votes aye. 13 ayes, one dissent. Okay, all right. Um, we will move on to item 3.2. Uh, from the city clerk submitting a communication from Alderperson Boren suggesting the attached re revision of the chief administrative officer's job uh, description to be considered by the Salary and Grievances Committee. And that's Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would uh, move to uh, send this back to Salaries and Grievances. There is a motion and a second right. to send this uh, back to Salary and Grievance. <laughs> is there discussion on the motion? Alderman Herman? I am of the belief that we should keep the status quo, keep the 16 older people, because if we're, we have... We're, we're just on, um, oh. uh, Mark, we're on 3.1. Yeah, we're on 3.2. Oh. 3.2. 3.2. Sorry. I'm sorry, 3.2. <laughs> All right. Is there any other discussion on the motion? So this is a, a, a motion to refer the job description uh, back to salary and grievance. If there's no further discussion, all right. All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Okay. It worked out. No, it came out. Hey. <laughs> now we need to vote. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, so there's an error. Oh. They're just hazing me because, like, I'm kind of new at this job, so. <laughs> What can we do? <laughs> <We're planted> the, <laughs> gremlins. <laughs> the gremlins and the Kremlin. All right. Um, we will move on to um, item number 3.3. Uh, this is um, a charter ordinance proposed by Alderpersons Boren and Koth, um, subject to the home rule provisions of uh, section 66.0101 of the Wisconsin statute to reduce the number of Alderpersons in the city from 16 to 8. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd, I would move that we send this to uh, strategic fiscal planning. There's a motion to refer this to strategic fiscal planning. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. So discussion on the motion. Who did the second? I'm sorry. It was uh, Susie. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Well, actually, uh, Alderman Koff. Um, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm curious as to why we would send it back there and not have the discussion tonight. Alderman Carlson? 
I, I think the venue for this discussion, this is a pretty big change and, and there's things that we, um, I don't think as a full body we can dis uh, discuss in the beginning. We need to talk about committee structure. We need just, just to talk about the overall structure of how the council is going to look and I think that would start better at, the, at a smaller level and therefore strategic, strategic fiscal planning. It's the heads of all the, it's all the chairpersons of the standing committee so I think that's the best venue to start this, this discussion and then bring it back when there's actually a solid plan to do this. Thank you. Other comments? Oh, no, Cuss is coming down. Oh, did, you just, did you hit again? Yes. Go ahead. Oh, I stand? I know where it seems to be standing. Um, and then when would the strategic fiscal planning meet? I would have to defer to the chairperson. <laughs> <laughs> um, we could schedule a meeting as soon as we can get the heads of the standing committees. We have some other issues that we have to deal with um, in strategic fiscal, so we are planning on um, sometime in the month of December having that meeting. Other discussion? Alderman Herman. I never believe that we should keep the status quo, keep 16, because there's always a backup or a reinforcement, let's say, a constituent has an urgent matter and their first choice is not available for whatever reason. Let's say older person A has an extended illness or they have to take a sabbatical for another reason. There's always a backup or reinforcement. There's another person they can get a hold of if their first choice is not available. If you don't have two per district, then that alternative is not, not available. I think there's strength in numbers in this particular case. Very good. Any other comments? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. I guess I'd, I'd like to see it discussed tonight. I think it's good to have everybody involved, every, have everybody have the same information. Um, I do think that there's a pretty <coughs> fairly detailed plan that has been laid out. Um, agree with it or disagree with it, but I think this is the place to discuss this type of a change. Um, we've discussed this type of a change in the past at this venue, and again, I think it's good that everybody be on the same page and get the same information um, and be operating off of that. So I, I think we should discuss it tonight here, um, and like I said, start that process now. All right. uh, Alderman Hammond, again, the discussion is on the motion to refer. I, I, I think there are some challenges, um, and just for the record, I'm not opposed to reducing you know, the size of the council. I just think that although the, the structure of how we're going to get there has been uh, ferreted out or at least proposed um, as part of the document, there's been no discussion of the logistics about how we're going to, which committees, how we're going to do committee structure, how the standing committees are going to look, um, which committees, are we going to give department heads more authority to do the things that we won't have enough bodies to do, you know, all of, how is this going to, when is it going to happen, how is the, you know, with redistricting, how that's going to happen, all of these types of things really haven't been discussed. Um, and yes, we could do it in this venue, um, but I think that, you know, having a lot of those challenges figured out in a, in a, at, the, at a smaller committee level, um, bringing it back to the committee as a whole where we actually have the logistics worked out makes a little more sense to me um, at first blush, so. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I first brought this um, up a couple of years ago, and it's relatively the, the same um, idea in the same uh, procedure that, that, that I brought up. And uh, at that time, there were some logistical issues that Alderman Hammond just mentioned, uh, specifically the committee structure. And the sentiment and a thought of the council at that point in time was that uh, the people on the council certainly didn't want to be involved in more meetings um, as a result of reducing the size of the council. There was also, um, you know, after that time, there was the, um, the redistricting that was done and there was the idea put forth that the city should follow the same districts that the county has for their city districts. And that would be 10 instead of eight. And, um, you know, that, that should be something that should be looked at too. So, uh, you know, for, for those reasons and um, the broad scope of those reasons and the detailed discussion that would be needed um, to be had on each one of those, um, I, I would be for submitting this to strategic fiscal planning as well and, and having something 
come out of that, and, and I would certainly attend that meeting. Um, I've got an interest in this. Originally, I brought this up, and, and I would like to see it reduced somewhat. Um, I'm not sure I'm in favor of eight um, for a variety of reasons, but um, I, I would certainly share those at, at strategic fiscal planning. Alderman Koss? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I would be okay having this uh, sent to strategic fiscal planning um, because my co-author is not at this meeting, and that would make sense also. Any other discussion? Questions, comments? If not, we will vote on the motion, to which, which is to refer this to uh, strategic fiscal planning. Can I do a roll call? All right, <clears throat> and we will do a roll call on this vote. Oh, wait, came up. Somebody came up. Came up. Up there. That's right. We're doing a roll call. Oh, I thought. Oh, popped up though. What popped up? Oh, it popped up. I just voted. I just voted. It popped up, but not to refer to committee. Which is a big deal. Was that? Are you voting Vote yes? I to move it to committee, not what this I think says. on the bottom. Yeah. On the bottom it says the bottom. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry, I didn't read the fine print. My apologies. All right, so <laughs> on your screen, you have a motion to refer this to strategic fiscal planning, correct? Aye. And has Aye. everyone voted? Yes. Yes. The board is already voted. It's gone. Okay. <laughs> Send it back. All right. <laughs> and uh, we have 14 eyes uh, on that motion. Thank you. All right, we will move on to um, uh, item number 3.4, uh, a uh, uh, general ordinance proposed by Alderman, Alderperson Koth reestablishing the salary schedule for the Office of Alderperson commencing council year 2017-2018. Alderman Koth? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I move to uh, also send a strategic fiscal planning. Second. Right. So we have a motion to refer this matter to strategic fiscal planning. Is there a discussion? Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I personally don't think we need to send this to strategic fiscal planning. I was actually going to make a motion to file. I don't think there's any justification to raise our salary. I would actually go the opposite and try to lower our salary. And I will be su submitting a competing document at some point. Um, but I, there's absolutely no need to du more than double our salary. I, I, I think we just need to end this now. Thank you. Alderman Koth. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I appreciate your opinion, but I believe <coughs> that would be a healthy discussion at the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. Any other comments? Hearing none, seeing none, we'll vote on the motion to refer this uh, uh, matter to strategic fiscal planning. Uh, all in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? One of uh, Alderman Carlson votes nay. Chair votes aye. Motion, motion passes. Well, very good. Um, we are, the next meeting date will be determined, and I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Sure. Sure.